Luna 25 Russia's space endeavor ends as a sad day for science as it crashed on the moon's surface after 50 years of restarting its lunar mission. Let's dive into the events that might have led to this outcome. After the separation of the third stage boosters and the crucial Frega engine burn, the spacecraft's upper section prepared for separation. Simultaneously, the Luna 25 lander executed two precise correction maneuvers to fine-tune its course. This stage marked the lunar transfer and orbit insertion phase, where the trajectory was aligned with the Moon's orbit. The Luna 25 adjusted its positioning for an optimal landing site. It is at this stage the thrusters of the Luna 25 lander possibly failed to provide the necessary thrust during the pre-orbital stage. The Luna 25 thrusters struggled to calculate and counteract the Moon's gravitational pull, resulting in an uncontrolled spinning motion. When it was time for the thrusters to initiate the debraking process in outer space, they were unable to sufficiently decelerate the lander. As a consequence, the lander entered the Moon's orbit without the activation of the required thrusters, or it might have pushed the thrusters a little bit too much required for a soft landing. These events caused the Luna 25 to spin uncontrollably and ultimately experience a hard crash landing, bringing an abrupt end to its mission. Interestingly, it has a plutonium heating system. Yes, that's right. A radioisotope to generate heat meant to endure the extremely harsh freezing condition on the south pole of the moon. And not to forget, we will also be looking at the basic step-by-step -step process of how it might have worked all in the videos ahead. So don't miss a beat. Now let's break down the components of this beast. Picture this. The Soyuz is a three-stage launch vehicle. This is the first stage made up of four boosters. Here comes the second stage, just above it is the central core, or some call this the third stage, and the fregate makes up the upper stage. Those boosters in the first stage are like the powerhouse of the operation. With each engine boasting four combustion chambers and nozzles, they generate some serious thrust. To keep everything on track, three-axis flight control is managed by aero fins. Yep, one per booster, and there are also movable during your thrusters, two per booster giving precise control over the spacecraft's orientation. Moving on to the second stage, that central core is more than just a looker. Just like the boosters, it's got that hammerhead design, making sure everything fits together like a well-orchestrated puzzle. And remember that stiffening ring? It's like the glue that holds the boosters and the core together. Now let's talk about the third stage. This stage is linked to the central core by a complex latticework structure. When the time is right, the main engine of the third stage ignites, propelling the spacecraft further on its incredible journey. And now the star of the final act, the fourth stage, the frigate. This stage is like the spacecraft's Swiss Army knife. It's autonomous and adaptable, designed to operate as an orbital vehicle. Think of it as the space equivalent of an all-terrain vehicle. The frigate extends the capabilities of the first three stages, allowing the Soyuz to reach a diverse range of orbits. The spacecraft can be divided into several distinct stages, each serving a specific purpose. Stage 1. Antennas and Radiators In the first stage, Luna 25 features an array of antennas. These include low-directional antennas which enable communication with Earth and directional antennas that aid in data transmission and reception. The Heart of the Probe Stage 2 However, the real heart of Luna 25 lies in its second stage. This is where the most critical components are located ensuring the successful functioning of the probe. The second stage of Luna 25 is home to a powerful solar battery that provides the necessary energy to run the spacecraft's systems and instruments. Now here's where things get really intriguing. Luna 25 faces an incredible challenge due to the extreme temperatures on the Moon's south pole, damaging all equipment in just one lunar day that is 14 Earth days. To overcome this challenge, the engineers behind Luna 25 came up with an innovative solution utilizing plutonium as a heat source. Yes, you read that right. They integrated a radioactive material, plutonium, to generate heat and maintain a suitable operating temperature within the spacecraft. This ingenious approach might ensure that Luna 25's systems remain functional for 12 months. Without this heat source, it will last only 14 days. The third stage mainly constitutes the thrusters, the tanks, and the landing gears. The soil collector device. This extraordinary gadget comes equipped with a bucket for surface excavation and a soil sampling tool for digging into the unknown lunar terrain. 
Now that we've understood the basic parts, let's analyze the basic step-by-step -step process of how this works. Step number one. Kicks-off starts at 35 seconds before liftoff. Imagine the anticipation as the first umbilical tower is gracefully released from the rocket. But wait, the excitement doesn't stop there. At T15 seconds, the second umbilical tower follows suit. Step number two. Picture this two minutes after liftoff, the four side boosters have done their job and are left with empty fuel tanks. It's a symbolic passing of the torch as the first rocket phase takes its curtain call. Step number three. To decrease weight, the fairing are ejected as shown in the animations. Step number four. Now it's time for the second stage or the central block to shine. As the side boosters gracefully bow out, the central block continues to blaze a trail of fire. Step number five. This is where the tail separation takes place. Step number six. After the separation of the third stage boosters, it's time for the first frigate engine burn. This is a critical moment as it marks the beginning of a new phase in this mission. The first frigate engine ignites, propelling itself away from the third stage boosters. Now, after achieving a stable orbit, it's time to get strategic. We've got the second frigate engine lined up for a slingshot approach to our destination. Picture this, just like the Chandrayaan-3, but with a more straightforward trajectory. This slingshot approach is a calculated move that utilizes the moon's gravitational pull to its advantage. As we're cruising along, the upper section of the spacecraft prepares for separations, making way for the next phase. It's time for our trusty companion, the Luna 22 lander, to show its skills. It's about to flex its muscles with not one, but two correction maneuvers. The first correction maneuver is executed, followed by the second. These precision moves help fine-tune its course and ensure we're right on track. It's like mastering a dance routine on a galactic stage. And the moment we've all been waiting for. The lunar transfer and moon's orbit insertion. It's the stage where we align our trajectory with the moon's orbit and gracefully slip into place looking for the perfect landing spot. While the Chandrayaan-3 itself comprises an indigenous propulsion module, a lander module, and a rover, the mission involves executing approximately five orbits around Earth, in layman's term is often referred to as the slingshot technique. This approach utilizes both Earth's gravitational pull and many internal thrusters to maneuver the spacecraft into a trajectory that allows it to achieve lunar orbit for its initial position around Earth. The objective of the Chandrayaan-3 mission was to operate for one lunar day. Yes, that's right, but this is equivalent to 14 Earth days. This is due to the extreme cold on the south pole of the moon, freezing all its equipment. It is because there is no sunlight to power the rover and the lander. But the Russian Luna 25 mission was made to survive harsh freezing temperatures as it planned to use a radioisotope device to generate heat using plutonium as a source at night. That means it was planned to last for one year on the moon, but unfortunately it crashed. Which was a sad day for science as some says the more the merrier. To lend subscribe and hit the notification bell to enjoy more original 3D animation videos just like these made in Blender open source software.